Atrioventricular node reentrant tachycardia. AVNRT. Types of AVNRT. Three types of atrioventricular nodal reentrant tachycardia, AVNRT, have been described. 1. Typical or slow fast AVNRT is the most prevalent type, accounting for 85 to 90% of cases. The earliest retrograde atrial activation is usually in the apex of Cook triangle. 2. Atypical or fast slow AVNRT, in which the earliest retrograde atrial activation is usually in the inferior part of Cook triangle. 3. Slow slow or intermediate AVNRT, a rare type in which the earliest retrograde atrial activation usually occurs along the roof of the coronary sinus. Clinical manifestations of AVNRT Female to male ratio is 2 to 1. Rate range is 140 to 240, commonly 160 to 190 beats per minute, but may occasionally be as slow as 120, or faster than 240. Induction of typical and atypical AVNRT in the same patient is possible, but unusual. It usually occurs in structurally normal hearts. The incidence of underlying heart disease in patients with AVNRT is equal to that in the general population. Common Symptoms of AVNRT Without underlying heart disease, palpitation, and dyspnea. With underlying heart disease, angina, syncope, heart failure, and rarely shock. Neck pounding may occur, due to atrial contraction against closed tricuspid valve. This feature distinguishes typical AVNRT from orthodromic AVRT. In the last, RP interval is relatively longer and atrial contraction starts well after ventricular contraction. After termination of AVNRT, bradycardia or even asystole may occur before the sinus node recovers from the tachycardia-induced overdrive suppression. Typical AVNRT The slow-fast AVNRT is called typical because 1. It accounts for 85-90% to 90 of all cases of AVNRT, while the fast-slow and slow-slow types represent the rest of cases. 2. For re-entry to start, it is typical that unidirectional block occurs in the fast, beta, pathway which has a longer refractory period, while anterograde conduction proceeds in the slow, alpha, pathway, which has a shorter refractory period, creating the anterograde retrograde slow fast conduction pattern of typical AVNRT. In typical AVNRT, anterograde, AV, conduction proceeds in the slow, alpha, pathway, while retrograde, VA, conduction proceeds in the fast, beta, pathway. Where is the reentry circuit? If the reentrant circuit is located within the AV node, neither the atria nor the ventricles are essential for reentry to continue. AV or VA block may occur without affecting the reentry circuit itself. If the perinodal tissue is involved in the reentry circuit, the situation will be different, for example, if the beta pathway is outside the AV node, it may not respond to AV node drugs, digitalis, adenosine, beta blockers, verapamil, and diltiazem, as the alpha pathway, while class 1A drugs will affect the beta pathway more than what is typical for AV node tissue. Normal Sinus Rhythm with Dual AV Node Physiology In patients with dual AV node physiology, during normal sinus rhythm, the impulse reaches the AV node when both pathways have recovered, and both can conduct the impulse. When the faster beta pathway wave front reaches the distal common pathway, it continues its anterograde conduction to the ventricles, but also conducts retrograde in the slower alpha pathway, to collide with and block its wave front, before reaching the distal common pathway. When the faster beta pathway wave front reaches the distal common pathway, it continues its anterograde conduction to the ventricles, but also conducts retrograde in the slower alpha pathway, to collide with and block its wave front, before reaching the distal common pathway. Initiation of typical AVNRT If a premature atrial contraction blocks in the fast pathway, which is still refractory, and travels anterograde across the slow pathway, to reach the distal common pathway, it will conduct anterograde to the ventricles, as well as retrograde in the fast pathway which has recovered, and can now conduct the impulse back to the proximal common pathway, to re-enter the slow pathway, and so on. The cycle continues repeatedly, 
thus initiating typical AVNRT. A premature atrial contraction blocks in the fast, beta, pathway, and travels anterograde across the slow, alpha, pathway. It then conducts anterograde to the ventricles, as well as retrograde in the fast pathway which has now recovered. It can now conduct back to the proximal common pathway, to re-enter the slow pathway, and so on. Typical AVNRT may also be initiated by a premature ventricular contraction, which conducts retrograde through the fast pathway then anterograde through the slow pathway and the cycle continues repeatedly. Termination of Typical AVNRT The fast pathway generally has rapid conduction anyway, and the cycle length is dependent on the slow pathway conduction velocity. Termination of typical AVNRT is often the result of a block in the slow pathway, and the last P wave is not conducted to the ventricles. That is why termination of AVNRT is often by a retrograde P wave. Termination is also possible the other way round by QRS, if it happens that the last beat of typical AVNRT blocks in the retrograde direction and the last QRS is not followed by P. ECG during typical AVNRT Atrial activation begins soon after the onset of ventricular activation, the P wave is usually buried within the QRS complex. Thus, a regular narrow complex tachycardia with absent P waves is almost always typical AVNRT. Rarely, minute P waves may be present but not seen in other tachycardias. Sometimes the P wave is inscribed on the terminal QRS, mimicking S waves in inferior leads, pseudo S or R prime waves in lead V1, pseudo R prime. Rarely, the P wave distorts the initial QRS complex, mimicking Q waves in inferior leads. When P waves are seen just after the QRS, RP is less than PR, short RP tachycardia, and RP interval is generally less than 100 millisecond, differentiating it from orthodromic AVRT, to be discussed later. When seen, the P wave is reversed in direction, that is inverted in lead 2 and upright in lead AVR. QRS is usually narrow. It may become wide in patients with aberrant intraventricular conduction, coexisting bundle branch block, or pre-excitation by a bypass tract. In patients with bypass tracts, anterograde AV conduction proceeds simultaneously in the AV node his Porcunye system and the bypass tract resulting in a fusion-wide QRS complex, pre-excited typical AVNRT. Bundle branch and fascicular blocks do not affect the cycle length or the rate of AVNRT, because the ventricular tissue is not incorporated in its re-entry circuit. Likewise, AV dissociation, anterograde AV block, and retrograde VA block, are all possible without change in rate, and without tachycardia termination because neither the atria nor the ventricles are involved in the re-entry circuit. Secondary STT changes may occur during tachycardia, and usually revert to normal after its termination. Narrow complex tachycardia with absent P waves, is almost always typical AVNRT. P waves distorting the terminal portion of the QRS complex in inferior leads, called pseudo-S waves, are characteristic. P waves distorting the terminal portion of the QRS complex in lead V1, called pseudo R prime waves, are characteristic. Differentiation between typical AVNRT and orthodromic AVRT. In orthodromic atrioventricular reentrant tachycardia, AVRT, the impulse conducts slowly anterograde in the AV node, while fast retrograde conduction occurs in a bypass tract, slow fast pattern. Since retrograde conduction is faster, the RP is shorter than the PR, short RP tachycardia, but the re-entry circuit is relatively longer than that of typical AVNRT, because it involves the ventricular tissue to reach the bypass tract retrogradely. It follows that, although both typical AVNRT and orthodromic AVRT are short RP tachycardias, the RP interval is relatively longer in AVRT. Differentiation between typical AVNRT and orthodromic AVRT based on the absolute value of RP interval is suggested as follows. RP shorter than 50 millisecond, typical AVNRT. RP 50 to 100 millisecond, both are possible. RP longer than 100 millisecond, orthodromic AVRT. Differentiation is, however, 
simplified by many authorities as follows. RP shorter than 70 millisecond, typical AVNRT. RP of 70 millisecond or longer, orthodromic AVRT. Classification of regular narrow complex tachycardias in surface ECG, as clarified before, is based on the retrograde conduction time in the surface ECG, the RP interval, which corresponds to the VA interval in intracardiac recordings during EPS. Accordingly, narrow complex tachycardias are classified in EPS as short VA or long VA rather than short RP or long RP tachycardia. VA interval is measured from the start of V in right ventricular apex channel, to the start of A in high right atrial channel. This is a schematic of intracardiac ECG, during AVNRT, first and second beats, the HIS bundle is activated first, H wave, followed by the ventricles, V wave, followed by the atria, A wave. The sequence of activation in HIS bundle, HB, channel is therefore HVA and VA is shorter than AV. After return of sinus rhythm, last beat, the sequence of activation becomes normal, AHV. Atypical AVNRT In atypical AVNRT, anterograde conduction proceeds in the fast pathway, because the slow pathway has a permanent unidirectional anterograde block. Retrograde conduction returns in the slow pathway, thus called, fast slow AVNRT. Atrial activation is significantly delayed relative to ventricular activation, due to slow retrograde conduction and the arrhythmia is characterized by RP longer than PR, and VA longer than AV, long RP or long VA tachycardia. P waves have reversed direction, and occur after the T waves, most clearly seen in inferior leads. Atypical AVNRT must, of course, be differentiated from other long RP tachycardias. This is a schematic demonstrating long RP tachycardia. The RP interval is clearly seen longer than the PR interval. P waves are inverted in lead 2, differentiating it from sinus tachycardia, in which P waves should be upright in that lead. Slow slow AVNRT In slow slow AVNRT, the relative RP and PR intervals depend on the relative anterograde and retrograde conduction velocities. The arrhythmia may present as short RP tachycardia, long RP tachycardia, or even the RP and PR intervals may be equal. AV and VA conduction in AVNRT Usually, there is 1 colon 1 AV and VA conduction. 2 colon 1 AV block occurs in about 10% of cases, because of block below the reentry circuit, usually below the HIS bundle, and infrequently in the lower common pathway of the reentry circuit. Rarely, VA block can occur because of block in the upper common pathway of the reentry circuit. As stated before, AVNRT can continue, without termination, despite AV or VA block. This is a schematic showing that AVNRT continues despite VA retrograde block of the third impulse, V wave not followed by A wave, indicating that the atrial tissue is not required for continuation of the tachycardia. Thank you.